Hello, happy Friday. It's, a, it's Friday for me anyway. I don't know what day it is when you're watching this, but it's Friday for me. Nice quiet day. I've got a bunch of stuff I should be doing, but instead of doing those things, I'm going to do this thing. What you see here is bathymetry and elevation data, uh, Gebco elevation data, Gebco. Quite high res, let me zoom into like the Challenger deep area. Well, it's hard to see because it's all blacked out. Um, in that case, instead of percent clip or none, I'm going to do standard deviation there. Now we're actually using statistics to break out the depth into little uh, light to dark chunks. I'm going to make a series or well, I'm going to make one, but it's based on a series of um, maps or graphics that I had to make map based graphics so many so many people make map based graphics and a lot of the times it's not map makers who have to do it and I feel bad for those people because they probably end up having to like trace a lot of things and they're stuck with it but map makers we've got it made because we can we can we could create our own geographic content our own geographic assets and then play with them in uh, image editing tools. In this case, I'm going to be making my map in ArcGIS Pro and then I'm going to um, do some funky blend mode blurring things with it in Photoshop to, to make it graphic-y because it doesn't have to be a map. It just has to be a map-like graphic of the oceans. Okay, so here's Gebco data. Uh, I'll just, actually I'll keep it at this area. This is Challenger Deep, by the way. <clears throat> the deepest part of the ocean. And for our hill shade, I'm going to open up the raster functions in the imagery tab, raster functions. There's an option called hill shade. I'll come here. I like to change this to 320, as I've said, because I read some research that says that's the best for avoiding relief inversion. Let's just give this a go. Well, I'll tell it which data set to base it on. Boom, there it is, heel shade. Gosh, I never get sick of seeing that. It's amazing. Now for the color, instead of white to black, I'm gonna do a cool ocean-y color scheme. I'll go like a deep purple all the way to like a bright cyanish sort of color. Let's just see what that gives us. Looks cool. Let me let me boost it a little bit. So I'll snug this in. I'll snug this in. The darkest shadows. Let's just make that full on black. And then this area. <clears throat> let's do. Uh, I don't know. Lighter? No. Let's do even change this to hue saturation value and then I'll push its saturation way down so it's almost white I don't know okay so we've got a hill shade of our under our, of our sea floor our bathymetry let me pull up this original elevation data and drop it right back on top what I want to do is make this semi-transparent so that the deeper areas are darker and murkier and the lighter uh, the higher areas are more transparent like you have to look through water and there's visibility degradation that happens as a result so um i'll i'll, I'll keep it along a similar color scheme so i'll do this kind of bright vibrant greenish turquoise not turquoise turquoise i think comes from like the French word for Turkish blue because of minerals that they traded with Turkey for turquoise okay so I'll use it the same deep and then over here I'll make it fully transparent at the surface actually technically this is elevation too so this is the tip of um, the Himalayas and then this is the bottom of Challenger deep Let's see how this looks. Cool, a little bit, wow, that's neat looking though. A little bit 
too much? Is it too? Is this too much? I don't know. Let's make it a little bit more transparent, but man, I do like that. I'll make it 20% transparent and I'll bring this down a little bit, maybe to somewhere closer to the coast sea level. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's, let's export this. Uh, one of the new features of Pro is that you've got more control over exporting right from your map. You don't have to create a layout anymore if you want to export. So I'll hit the share tab, map. I'll call this Challenger. Ten eighty height, nineteen twenty width to fit a screen. To fit my screen anyway. Yeah, let's see. Export. It's thinking it's done. That was fast. View exported. There it is. I look at it at its actual size. It should fit my screen perfectly. Cool. Challenger deep right there. Okie doke. Let's open this in Photoshop. The keys you hear me typing is me typing Photoshop and opening it. It's opening on my other monitor. I'll drag it over once it's open. Okay. Here's Photoshop. Don't look at this secret unreleased book cover. Process, design process. Okay, here is the image we just made in ArcGIS Pro and exported right there. So what I want to do is add a dark blurriness around the edges to kind of make it look like you're underwater and you've got like a cool spotlight, like, like in the movie, the abyss where they've got those submersibles and that little you know faded point of light and the real ambient um, dissolution of light around the edges of things really beautiful and terrifying I'm, I'm going to make a copy of this so i'm going to drag this layer down to the add button pew make a copy i'll come up to the image tab adjustments i'll play with its hue and saturation i'm going to Push the hue over into the deeper blue slash purple area. I'll boost its saturation to fill out those colors. And I'm going to make it darker. Okay. And I'm also going to add a blur. Clearly, I'll choose Gaussian blur because it's the best blur algorithm. Okay. Seven pixels is good, actually. I hit OK. And now what I want to do is use uh, a mask and kind of punch a hole in the middle of this that's faded. So it'll be fully transparent in the middle and then fully opaque at the outside. So with this layer selected, I'll choose add layer mask. I'll add the layer mask. And now with the gradient tool selected, and specifically the kind of the radial gradient click and drag and that actually looks pretty cool that was a nice lucky first pass you can click and drag this gradient anywhere and it'll you know so wherever the cent center of my gradient is i'm seeing through to the bright crisp cyan seafloor and the perimeter fades out to a, a darkened version. Isn't that fun? Now I'm going to, I'm just going to tweak this bottom background one. I'll turn it off. So this is my original. I'm going to make this a little bit brighter. So my bright center, come here, image adjustments, contrast. I almost always boost the contrast of my maps after I make them. I just find I like the results better when I do that. There's some crispness and clarity that I thought I had when I was making the map, but then I boost it. I'm like, yeah, I like this better. Okay. And one last thing I like to do, man, almost on all of my maps, is to add a vignette. Now, I kind of made a vignette via this darkened, blurred version, but I'm just going to go full-on vignette, and I'll show you how I do that. So I'll I'll add an adjustment layer and I'll call it gradient or I'll fill it with a gradient. And instead of linear, I'll choose radial. 
and so it stretches all the way out give it a 200 percent scale and let's see i'm going to make it fully transparent black to transparent or a to fully opaque black so i'll make both of these black and then i'll just switch the opacity direction here and kind of push the ramp of that out a little bit so this is a vignette and we're almost there lastly what i do instead of just a normal blend mode which is kind of like no blend mode or sitting on top as the blend mode i like to do overlay as a blend mode and it's subtle but it adds just a richness around the perimeter of the composition and it draws your eyes to the center which is fun so there you go an oceany graphic which would be used as a background graphic the original request was we need a background image for an ocean themed thing and here it is that's how you do it enjoy have fun <laughs>